Oops, funny thing happened the other day. I was uh, getting set up to test another batch of K3NG universal controller boards. Um, hooked everything up, turned it on, and there's that unmistakable whiff of burning electronics. Oh, Jesus Christ. Turn everything off. Now, the, um, my nose led me to the, to the G5500 itself. Something inside that was not happy. Now, you know, um, despite my best effort, oh, now incidentally, I do two different types of controller boards here. I've got the universal controller board and the G5500 specific controller board. Now, their pinout on the um, eight pin DIN here is mostly the same except for one pin. Um, and because I have two controller boards, I've got two different cables. They are very clearly labeled universal and G5500 controller. Now you would think that would be enough to make it idiot proof, but not in this case. Long story short, release the magic smoke from inside the G5500. Stick around, we're gonna find out what went wrong, what needed to be fixed, and the component that Yesu should have fitted in the first place. That's coming up. So the controller looked like it was completely normal. Both the meter lamps were, were on, except that when you operated the uh, counter clock or clockwise up or down buttons, nothing would happen at the rotor. All right, first thing to do is to turn it off at the mains and uh, take the top lid off. So there's two screws either side. Then you want to remove the third screw at the front here on either side. That will release the front panel. Remove the four screws that hold the PCB down to the two meter movements. There was no visual evidence as to what component had actually failed, but just from looking at the schematic and some basic testing using a, an everyday digital voltmeter, I determined that diode three had actually failed. That's, that's this diode here. We're gonna take a look at the schematic. So coming off the transformer secondary, it goes into a full wave bridge rectifier. The negative line out of that rectifier is there, the positive line out of the rectifier is here. Now, this negative line is not zero volts or, or ground in the, in the, uh, on the controller board. The ground is actually up here, and that is derived by having some uh, a three Ford biased diodes through that 1K resistor, through that 11 volt Zener, then you've got your three, three diodes there. Now, typically you get a, a, a forward voltage drop of about 0.7 volts. So there's about a two volt um, voltage difference between what is ground and this rail here. So what, wh why Yaesu do that is that generates, a, with respect to ground, that uh, creates a minus two volt rail for these 4558 op amps. This is a 4558 is a dual op amp package and you can see the four op amps uh, there. Now with diode 3 open circuit this 11 volt voltage regulator is not going to work. This is just a, a simple emitter follower series pass regulator where we've got a, a Zener diode in, in the base that's being pulled up with a 1k resistor uh, with, with an 11 volt Zener on the base. We have about 10.5 volts on the emitter here. Interestingly enough, in the later versions of the G5500, the Zeno resistor and the NPN series pass transistor are replaced with a 78L10 uh, voltage regulator. And still to this day, Yaesu are still implementing pretty much the same arrangement that with their latest G5500 DC controller. If we just take a look at the schematic for that, we can see our, our four-way bridge rectifier, the negative output of that. Um, is actually the minus two volt rail. We have our three uh, series diodes, which then creates the ground. So the ground is sitting uh, two volts above the minus two, as you'd expect. The 78 uh, L10 has been replaced with the 78 uh, 12 12 volt regulator. But other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. So this is pretty easy to find with a digital voltmeter. Negative uh, uh, here, and we'd expect to find about two, two volts um, acro across there. 
but that was sitting at 15 volts through this 1K in Xena. So that indicated that either diode 3, 4 or diode 5 had gone open circuit and it turned out to be diode 3. Time to turn on the soldering iron. That was removed and replaced with a 1N4002 general purpose rectifier. All right, we're back in business. Now, coincidentally, this morning I also had an email from Mike, WB8CXO. G'day, Mike, about uh, the K3NG rotator controller boards. And um, on the issue of uh, trying to get around the voltage drop because of this 20 ohm resistor that Yosu fit, the um, 20 ohm resistor here, R10, so that comes off that 16 volt rail and provides 12 volts out to your external controller board. Now, instead of short circuiting that out, Mike made the really brilliant suggestion. Don't know why I didn't think of this myself, but mm, you know, hey, if you're stupid enough to uh, hook up the wrong lead, you're capable of anything. But Mike made the suggestion of instead of short circuiting that resistor out, why not fit a resettable fuse in its place? Which is exactly what I did. So, this is a really easy modification. I totally recommend it. It makes absolute sense. Thank you, Mike, for bringing this up. Now, the voltage drop that you get is really only a problem when you're drawing a lot of current out of the thing, and particularly with if you're using something like a, a five-inch connection screen. Good thing about through-hole, it's uh, quite easy to work with. Okay, so we've got the resistor out. We'll use a bit of uh, solder wick. With the solder wick, I like to use uh, a flux pen just to help the wicking. So, just a matter of doing that, and it helps pull the solder away. All right, with some flux on the do solder wick. As easy as that. I'm just going to preform the legs on the resettable fuse. Sort of guesstimate what we need initially. Get the pitch right. It's a bit too wide. Yeah, that's all right. That's good. So where R10 was, we're now fitting a resettable fuse. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to power it on and measure the volts we get. It's all good, I can hear that working. That is my zero volt reference there, and that goes out to the 16 volts. That's great. So I'll trim the legs. This particular resettable fuse I get from RS, there's the part number there, 506959. It has a 5 amp trip current and 2.5 amp hold current. I actually fit these to my K3NG Universal Rotator Controller Boards. It's the only reason I've fitted this particular one. You could also use uh, something with a smaller trip current, maybe um, uh, 2 amps might be more appropriate with a 
hold current of one amp. Depends how much current you're gonna be drawing, you intend to draw out of the controller. All right, I hope that saves you from any potential disasters in the future. Pretty easy mod to do, really worthwhile doing. Thanks again, Mike, for suggesting that. And until the next video, stay safe and we'll see you then. Cheers.